So what's your stage name? Um, Stephen Azokadi. Oh, so you couldn't be... Yeah. yeah. Oh. So, But I wanted to change it because um, I found... Um, well, A, it's very hard to say, and I wanted to keep it separate. And um, Sam Black, for me, was uh, a Google random name generator. Mm. And it was the second one came up. The first one was Constantine Fortescue. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Could I get cookies? Welcome to the Young Performers Podcast. So what next? Uh, now this month is going to be very exciting. Uh, it is a headshot special. So uh, for the next four episodes, you're going to be hearing some advice from four of the UK's leading headshot photographers. They're going to talk us through how to get the most out of your session, what to bring, etc. And if photography is something that interests you, we'll be touching on how to get into that as well. So without further ado, photographer number three. Samuel Black Photography, also known as Stephen O'Doherty. So here we are at Michael Nadra Primrose Hill, um, the finest wine bar in Camden. Fabulous. Um, uh, and, uh, what's going on? Thank you very much. We just plugged you. We just plugged you. Just <laughs> Michael <right>. Nadra. <laughs> <laughs> Coming at you. <laughs> okay, playing with ice. There we go. Mm. Thank you. Very good. Mm. Right. The most wonderful thing about the podcast is it takes you to the most wonderful places. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, um, thank you so much. Uh, this is uh, Stephen Adogaty uh, from Samuel Black Photography, That's right. um, who, who did my headshots, in fact. Uh, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful person. Um, so we'll just get straight into it, get all the, we won't bother with all the boring intro stuff. So, because um, you've been chatting for ages anyway. Yeah. So, uh, how did you first get involved in, in uh, photography? Well... So I started as an actor, I went to the Centre School of Speech and Drama, and I had a lovely career, I have to say. Um, but when it, um, you know, uh, uh, w- when it sort of dried up uh, early in, in, in the process, uh, before it picked up again, I, um, I started modelling at the time. I was much younger and much thinner than I <laughs> currently am. And um, yeah, and I, I, I started modelling and I became very sort of... Um, intrigued with the process mm. um, I loved um, I loved the fact that you could capture a moment um, I, l- I loved the cameras and the lights and things like that not in a sort of narcissistic way although I guess there's always a narcissistic element in it but um, I, I, I sort of loved the process of it I loved seeing a final image um, and uh, 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 very sort of early on in my uh, modeling career I signed quite a nice contract and um, from that I, I, I bought a camera and um, I started learning the process um, and that's sort of how I, I got started a, a friend of mine um, he was an actor couldn't afford some headshots at the time he wanted to um, he wanted to get some headshots uh, but um, just didn't have the money for it being an actor mm. and um, he asked me with uh, you know, with my camera, could we go out to the park one day and take some photos? And we did. And uh, from the back of that, you know, one of his friends asked, and then one of her friends asked, and it sort of snowballed from there. And eventually, I thought, shit, I need to get a. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> and from from there, I thought, um, oh, I need to get a price for this. And um, yeah, that's how it started. Hmm. And it grew and grew and grew. Cool. And so, when was the? When did you feel was the point that you? Uh, to justify that you were no longer doing this as a hobby and you started actually doing this as a thing you could start charging for and you were starting to make a business out of it? Sure. Um, I don't know. I think um, I think um, when, when I sort of realised there was, um, there was a, a demand from strangers to, um, to, to sort of hire me as, as a service. And I mean, it was very cheap back then, but um, I sort of got a price very early on. And... Um, you know that that was great at the time. You know, of course, you know, now I'm you know um, a bit more established and everything. But um, you know, at, at, at the time, I mean, I think it was the third or fourth shoot I did that I started charging. Mm. Um, and because again, you know, I'd spent time as an actor and I'd spent time as a as a sort of model and everything as well. Um, that I had a clientele there, mm. um, sort of from the get go. Because you know, I struggled for 
um, I struggled for excuse me so that's my phone ringing no. um, <laughs> um, you know I you know I struggled as most actors do for um, you know for, for a while and, you know you, you work with people and um, you know then they, they they require headshots and they you know some of them want to you don't have the money for it and they, they want to go with someone they know or they trust who's starting out and it's a gamble but you know thankfully for me the gamble paid off mm. and it's um, yeah it's it's uh, it's grown into a, a business from that which is great and a business I can't ignore which is you know great for me you know I really love it as I, as I sit my way yeah, yeah. so like when you uh, were kind of starting out you started developing your own kind of style of your headshot and stuff where, what, what was the what for you was could you pinpoint a specific moment where you started realizing exactly what it was you wanted from your style of headshot? I, I can. Um, for me, it was um, uh, when, when I started um, photography. I was um, I was quite arrogant. I thought um, you just point a camera and take a picture and it's beautiful, but of course that's not the way. Um, and I started becoming really sort of entrenched with watching um, documentaries on um, sort of very very. Uh, famous fashion photographers from you know different eras. So, you know the David Baileys and you know um, uh, Herb Ritz and, and and so on and so forth. And I became very um, enamoured with their processes. And I stumbled upon um, at the time a photographer I didn't know, which seems alien to me now. Um, uh, called Annie Leibovitz, and of course I'd seen her images, but I didn't know they were hers. And um, to me, she was mind-blowingly astute and very artistic and um, very sort of communicative, um, communicative. Mm -hmm. there we go, I said that correctly, um, through picture. And I thought, um, I just thought, fuck me, she's, this is it, this is wonderful, she's an epitome of a photographer. And I thought that this is mind-blowingly good stuff. And I sort of, um, there's no sort of... Um, sort of uh, 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 tutorials or uh, documentaries on her style. There's documentaries on her and, and, and her as a person. But I just started studying her photos and I thought, my God, she's wonderful. And it was at that time I thought, ah, you can have a style as a photographer. Um, you know, which sounds ludicrous because as I say, I, I you know, um, you know, I'd seen other photographers. And of course, her Ritz is a style, very high contrast, black and white. David Bailey was the face of the '60s, and so on and so forth. But you know, he, he, he was, nobody really touched me quite like her. And it was at that point that I lost my arrogance yeah. as a photographer, which sounds stupid to say because I, you know, I was an amateur, you know, mm. at the time. But um, at that point, I thought, my God, she's wonderful, and I, I started, um, yeah, I started. Uh, just absorbing everything Annie Lee of it yeah. and um, and that you know grew into you know other photographers um, now you know um, and um, and started studying what they're doing you know Maria Testino and the like and uh, and you sort of um, you sort of learn how they light and learn how they work and learn what they see which is the most important because actually a fashion lighting is a very different thing from a headshot light and um, and uh, but you, but you take from it what what makes an image strike. And for me, it was always the eyes. So um, yeah, you you sort of uh, you look at that and you inform your opinion and try things. Mm. And that's kind of how I uh, developed my style. Mm. As it were. Yeah. So um, for anyone who does not is ignorant to who you are or what your style is, well, how, can, can you give a brief summary of what you would say your style is? Um, okay, uh, without giving away trade secrets. Without giving away trade yeah. secrets. Um, um, uh, uh, my, my style, I, I'm all about the eyes. Mm -hmm. I love a cheekbone, but the eye is paramount. Mm -hmm. um, I use augmented light, so I, I do use natural light, but I, I bring studio lights with me um, to a shoot, and I, I enhance what I see mm -hmm. uh, with the studio lighting, but I never invent light. Mm -hmm. um, I like to... 
the wanker in me wants to say paint with shadows, but I like I like working um, with shadows. I think they say more than the highlights. Mm. Um, but my style really happens in Photoshop, and that's all I'm really willing to say about yeah. that. No, 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 definitely, no, don't don't, uh, don't spoil anything. Yeah, no, brilliant. Um, no, but you know, um, you know, I, I, not to say my images are are fake or anything. In fact, quite the opposite. But I I spend a lot of my retouching. I, I do as minimal as I can on the skin. Um, but I, I spend a lot of time on the colours of the image, and that's, mm. that's I think, where my strength lies, mm. I think. Cool, sweet. Of course, somebody else might disagree yeah. with that, and they're very welcome to, but um, for me, that's what, I, that's what I like. So, okay, cool. So, um, now kind of, like, going to, like... I, I was trying to kind of focus on, say, like, you know... I was saying to you earlier, that kind of starry-eyed... Uh, kind of second year of drama school going to third year who sure. needs to try and pretend that they know everything about headshots and sure. knows absolutely nothing because let's be honest we never do um, nobody knows nobody anything. knows anything yeah, yeah. Uh, and what kind of so I'm try, uh, trying to think of like the, the fundamental kind of base questions that people sometimes ask when they go into go into third year and deciding who to go for so treating me like a ignorant has no idea about anything to do with headshots um what so let's start with one cliche which is the difference between a musical theatre shot and an acting shot what, sure. what does that mean uh, to you and not only in general the cliche and also what does that mean to you sure. and how would you photograph a musical theatre performer differently to an actor if you would at all well it is a difficult question because as an actor I would have said that a musical theatre headshot tends to be more glamorous and a bit more maybe say a studio shot or a, you know just something uh, with a bit more commercial value to it whereas an acting headshot maybe would tend to be a bit more gritty and a bit more natural now that's what I would have said as an actor but actually as a photographer if someone's paying for your style me personally I don't really make differences I find um, I find uh, very often my my clients uh, come because the, the musical theatre clients I have tend to be maybe more uh, more hybrids, you know, more sort of actors who are going into me or actors that cross over or you know, uh, something of that sort of ilk but um, I don't I have shot pure musical theatre and I have shot pure actors and I, you know, but I personally um, don't make any differences mm. um, because as I say, it's a style that somebody's paying for. It's a style that they've researched, their agents researched, their friends and family have research, researched. Maybe they're um, maybe they're coming recommended from a friend. Um, but I, I, as a photographer, don't make a difference at all. Because mm. I find if someone's coming, as I say, for for my look, for my style, then that's the style they want, and I, I don't necessarily. Um, yeah, I don't make a difference in that. Mm. Um, but again, it's it, for 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 me, um, it's entirely dependent on the individual. Mm. If an individual arrives to me and says, if a client, oh, sorry, if a client arrives, and they say, um, you know, I my dream role is Cosette in Les Mis, mm. then that's how I try and photograph them. You know, mm. amongst other things, if a client arrives and says, you know, my dream role is to be Juliet at the Royal Shakespeare Company, then that informs the shoot. Mm. So it's it's very dependent on on the person. But as a rule of thumb, I don't make a difference. Mm. Cool. So uh, we've mentioned a few times about your um, kind of your style of uh, photography sure. and stuff. <clears throat> but uh, I, I, I remember personally when I was uh, going through kind of that period in uh, drama school when we had this plethora of photographers and you had so many to pick from, um, like dozens and dozens, and everyone talking about, oh, I feel like uh, this photographer would really suit me. Sure. Um, however, if someone has never had a headshot in their life, yeah. how, how would they possibly know where to start regarding what would suit them? Do you have any idea how... Can you give any advice to someone who might, when they ask the question, what, which photographer would suit me? I mean, I wouldn't have a mm. technical answer to that. I think I kind of think you have to go with your gut, like mm. most things in life. Yeah. I think that you have to, um, you have to do your research. You have to be well informed, but ultimately, you have to go with what you feel. Mm. And um, you know, uh, for me, I get a very varied array of clients, um, but. 
you can't you can't sort of force that decision on someone it has to come from the gut mm. I, d- I don't know really any other way to answer that okay. um, you, you can be informed as I say you can have opinions from friends and family but ultimately what you have to choose from is what you feel and if you, you know maybe there's elements you know oh this person has photographed my skin tone a lot or maybe this person is a specialty in, you know whatever mm. you know you, you have to go with your gut I think yeah Okay, cool. Um, I, yeah, I don't yeah. know what other way to answer yeah, that. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, no, yeah. awesome. So, going more to the actual shoot itself. Okay. Um, so, what would you say is um, uh, the big the the, the, the go on, let's start as broad as possible, and then okay. we, we start focusing. But what we say is the the biggest thing people can pre- when in preparation for their shoot, how yeah. should they prepare for it regard regarding. Um, uh, what they should bring, uh, maybe let's say if they're thinking about getting a haircut beforehand, or sure. that, all those sorts of things. Where uh, what people should bring, um, um, speaking on that for a second, I I would advise um, for a headshot whatever you would audition in, I would say bring um, whatever you're comfortable in, bring. If it's a portfolio shoot for a model or something else like that, you know, or a, you know, businessman or whatever, I do a lot of Tinder photos as well. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's something like that, um, bring whatever your um, uh, what you would go in and to a night out in, I mm. think. But um, for for an actor, it's bring something you would addition in for sure. Bring colors that match your eyes. That's my big thing with the eyes. Mm. And a, a lot of the times in Photoshop, again, without giving away mm. too many trade secrets, but I would match colors mm. um, or complement colors mm. to the eyes, and. Um, uh, that, that, that's a big part of my post uh, my post processing um, deal um, mm. that I do but um, no I would advise uh, with clothes just bring things you feel comfortable in bring things that suit your body bring things that you would audition in you know mm. for whatever that is you know a lot of people bring you know um, a lot of actresses uh, actors would bring sort of a classic black jumper and things like that I, I, I always recommend more of a grey than a black but mm. um but yeah, it's, it's something you have to feel comfortable in. It's something you feel um, shows you off to your best. Um, in terms of haircuts and things, I always say don't do it the day before. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, do it, you know, maybe a week or two weeks. Um, most of my um, rescheduling appointments with my clients, um, they tend to be because they've had a botched haircut. Mm-hmm. Um, or you know they have had an audition come up, but it's it's largely a botched haircut. <laughs> and um, <laughs> um, so never do it the day before ever. Mm. Um, in terms of um, in terms of what um, what I think is the most important thing to to do to prepare for a shoot, have a good night's sleep. Mm. Just don't go out the night before. <laughs> Just have a good night's sleep. Mm. Uh, drink lots of water. Again, that's not necessarily. Um, a be all end all thing it just makes my life in photoshop a lot easier later <laughs> but um yeah just have a good night's sleep come fresh because the most important thing in a in a client i think is to be relaxed and to be willing to play as i say mm. um i talk about um i'm a bit of a wanker in this sense but i talk a lot about um there's three wanky phrases i use quite a lot mm. and i talk about images that are striking um, images that speak and images that are dynamic and um, if you show up with a willingness ready to play and ready to sort of go with the flow and see what happens then those things are going to be more likely than someone who comes sort of a bit tired and a bit sort of you know I've, I've had a rough night's sleep although you know you do get those clients and, you know as a professional photographer you just make it work mm-hmm. you know but um but yeah, get a good night's sleep would be the mm. the ultimate thing. If nothing else, mm. that is the one thing. Because the the eyes are where it's at, mm. you know. And I can do so much, mm. but come with eyes that are ready. Mm. So get a good night's sleep, and that's it. yeah, that's it. Yeah, cool. <laughs> so I I remember trying to word this to you earlier, but uh, if you 
I always struggle to word this question. But if you could take every single one of your favourite clients, or your, for, for when I say favourite clients, uh, the clients that you feel you've taken your favourite photos of. Sure. Uh, so you like, take your, te- your top ten photos you've ever taken sure. uh, of headshots, and uh, remember those clients. And if you could think of, if there was any similarity in mindset or attitude that these clients had during their photo shoot or the, when they came to you, um, if there was any similarity between them. So basically what I'm asking for is if there is um, the, 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 the one trick, uh, basically, that any any um, performer or anyone who wants a headshot um, could bring to the session. And, yeah, the kind of one mind or attitude thing that they could approach it with. Relaxation. Mm. Um, I always say to my clients, humour me. Mm. You know, humour me, give me this. Uh, I, I work, um, co- maybe controversially, I don't know if, the other guys and girls who are doing what I do do this but I work with characters I try and um, my my, my thing is I always try and photograph the poster of the movie of your life Mm. that's what I that's what I try and do and I always say humor me because often clients will show up and they're a bit nervous and they're a bit this and you you try and relax them I always take my clients for coffee beforehand to kind of Mm. loosen them up a bit and you know just so you're not sort of like you know hi what's your name yeah yeah yeah, of course okay right action you know Mm. Uh, I always try and take just get get to know a bit about them and to sort of um, figure them out and you know my eyes um, are not you know not necessarily the same eyes but you know it's it's the same amount of time I spend with a client um, before taking their photos um, as, as, as maybe a casting director would, you know, you look at them and you sort of think, what is your casting? And you have a very limited amount of time, maybe slightly more actually because a casting director has to sort of make up their minds in seconds, whereas I take minutes, sometimes hours with my clients, but you know, um, you know, you, you kind of have to figure them out very, very quickly. And the one thing that is uh, of, of, of my, um, f- not favorite clients, but the clients I've had the most success with in terms of getting them a shot that will get them through the door is relax and humor me. Mm. You know, a lot of clients, I always start uh, my sessions with, um, <laughs> again, uh, maybe I shouldn't say that because that's giving away a secret, but um, I, I always start my sessions with a particular shot. Mm. Um, and the reason is, is because it's the hardest one to do. And mm. we come back to it immediately at the end of the session. And um, because, um, you know, you get it out of the way with there and then. They feel Mm. like, you know, oh, I've got over the most, you know, difficult hurdle Mm. that I have to get across. And, um, yeah, and and then from there on, it's all sort of shits and giggles from then on. (laughs) And, you know, I always say to them, you know, if if this doesn't work, and I will very quickly tell you if it doesn't, Mm. and it's mostly on my part rather than theirs, but I will very quickly tell you if it doesn't work. Mm. The delete button is by my thumb. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So I just hit delete, and nobody ever needs to see it again. Mm. And um, yeah, so the one thing I would say is bring that sort of sense of playfulness, relaxation. Yeah, and that that's sort of it, yeah. really. You know, uh, uh, you know, you could be the best actor in the world, but I've met you for three minutes, so I don't, mm. I don't know what your strengths and weaknesses are unless you bring them to me so mm. you know that, that's what I would say cool yeah, awesome. Um, awesome so um, right so going back again to uh, boring black and white questions that a student might have um, so what is the difference between no like, again treat me like an idiot uh, what is the difference between an outdoor shot and a studio shot what, what does that actually mean uh, uh, as a photographer, not much, I don't think. Um, it's, it's, it's an aesthetic thing. Um, it depends what your style is. I mean, I find I like working outdoors. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, I, I, I find the quality of light is easier. I find that um, it's, it's just the way I like to work. I like sort of, I'm a bit of a hippie in that sense. I like being in nature. Mm-hmm. But actually what that means I don't know because quite often with um, especially because I use what I call augmented light so I'm not doing pure natural light I'm using studio lights outdoors my shots often end up looking like they were in a studio Um, so I don't know actually what that means really Mm. Um, I think it totally depends on um, I think it totally depends on um, 
again what the what the client wants you know mm. um i found that my style is is quite popular amongst hybrid actors or straight actors um and I, I, maybe a studio shot would be more sort of appropriate for potentially a musical theater performer but then again that's up to them you know mm. as i said i don't really make a difference um in in the client uh yeah, I, 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 I don't know necessarily mm. what the difference is that isn't aesthetic between mm. a studio shot and a, yeah. and a, and a natural light shot. Mm. So you don't feel it uh, in any way affects the, uh, the one being photographed? You know what I mean? It doesn't affect the face of the performer? No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. I mean, you have, you, you, know, you have more control in a studio, but then again, in, in, on the flip side of that, um, you have to you know, really paint with light and get it right mm. for the client. Whereas a natural light shot is always going to be, you know, by its very nature, more natural. Mm. You know, and, and some cast and directors prefer that, some prefer the studio shot. It's just, it's entirely dependent. Mm. Like anything in this business, it's entirely <laughs> case dependent, mm. you know. And um, yeah, um, uh, for someone like myself, um, you know, I do offer studio shots um, if, if that's what the client needs um, or if that's what the client wants. But ultimately, um, I do prefer shooting outdoors. I just think there's, there's something quite special and, you know, sort of um, unique mm. about it. Um, but again, that's me being a bit of a wanker, so, mm. you know, no, no, and a bit of a hippie. Awesome. Um, so, uh, here's a question that a friend of mine, uh, well, a friend of mine, a few friends of mine, uh, always seem to kind of, there's a theme that runs through it, which is um, a lot of people sometimes worry that they, they hate their smile. Uh, they look through all the time when they take like photos at parties and they go on Facebook and stuff and they just hate the way they smile. Sure. Um, but they still want to get a nice smiley photo for their headshots. How do... Without, again, without giving away face secrets, um, how how does someone try and produce a natural smile for themselves? Um, yeah, how what advice would you give? Make them laugh. Yeah. Really, make them laugh. I I never, very rarely, I, uh, unless a client's natural sort of smile in front of the camera is very good, I will never ask a client to smile. But I will tell, um, quite self-deprecating, often dad jokes. Um, to sort of get that out of them and mm. uh, you know I find it does work and of course you know it's not you know it's not me necessarily mm. but it works and you know just yeah make them laugh get them comfortable make them laugh and if all else fails just get them to do a rolling chuckle <laughs> <laughs> but no just, but, but yeah. really just yeah. make them laugh be yeah. the fool yeah you know totally. be the yeah. fool I think Again, without giving away trade secrets, but um, yeah, just um, my my shoots, as you know, are very much um, a Zoolander cartoon sort yeah, of thing. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And um, I I I do I like to work quick, and I like to work um, where I am the butt of every joke because yeah. it gets that relaxed atmosphere. It makes them laugh, and you know it makes it quick and fun, and you know that's. Yeah. That's sort of my key, I think. Mm. Awesome. Well, I think you've answered most of the things I want to ask, but I do want to quickly ask uh, more uh, for anyone who's thinking about getting into photography. Okay. Uh, what would you say is the key for any person trying to get into headshot photography? Uh, what would you say, from your experience, is the different, the key, the difference between uh, failure and success? What for you was a chain groundbreaking moment, or realization, or an attitude that you had? get a style mm. whether people think it's polarizing get a style very quickly I realized that that was the key you can look at a headshot photographer and know immediately who took those shots mm. get a style whether for good or for bad get a style cool awesome and stick to it yeah. like god uh, no I'm yeah. kidding no. if it doesn't work change it but, <laughs> <laughs> but um, do not be run of the mill mm. because there's there's many of those yeah, there so many yeah. do yeah. not be run of the mill mm. just get a style and keep experimenting you know for, for me um, this, the style was a hybrid um, between the American shot which a lot of people talk about which is a slightly more glamorous 
shot, very polished, and a, a British shot, which was very much more gritty and more characterful. So what I like to do is I like to shoot um, a sort of British style with American lights. And for me, at the time, to my knowledge, um, I didn't see many doing it. And um, for me, that was my way in. Because I did very much natural light headshots um, uh, before that um, to sort of no success, really but get a style and I think I, I think that's a very honest um, piece of advice really um, because a lot of um, a lot of photographers th sort of think the magic is in the client and it is to a certain extent but um, I think the client could do so much you've got to be a photographer mm. which is hard you know but get a style, and if it works, do it. Mm. Awesome. Brilliant. Well, I think you've answered <laughs> everything I need. Uh, um, however, I do have one last question for delete you. Delete it all. No uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to start again. No, um, uh, no. Uh, we, I do have one last question, which is I said to the last headshot for we were interviewing, but it's a bit harder for you. But even so, uh, so what next? <laughs> what next? Um, what next? Just keep doing what I'm doing. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I can't say much. Yeah, you more can't say much more. No, oh, we've been chatting. No, uh, no, definitely. <laughs> um, amazing. So, uh, <laughs> in that case, thank you so much for joining us. Thank uh, you and, very much. Um, yeah, so a pleasure as always. Yes. Uh, this is uh, Samuel Black Photography. Uh, Stephen Stephen Black Photography. Yes. Um, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode of So What Next. If you'd like to know more about Stephen, his links will be in the description below. Make sure you leave a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you all next time.